Welcome to Digital Oil and Gas with Jeffrey Can. I'm Jeffrey. Digital Oil and Gas looks at the impact of digital technology on the global oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Can on Twitter or at jeffreycan.com. This podcast is entitled Digital and the Oil and Gas ESG Agenda. COP26 may be behind us, but the hard work is still in front of us. Digital innovations can help oil and gas companies exceed their ESG commitments. Well, what exactly is ESG? Well, for clarity, E is for environmental, S is for social, and G is for governance. These days, ESG is shorthand for altering decision-making to take into account ESG factors. COP26 has helped highlight the pressing environmental concern of rising levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But E also includes the impacts of enterprise on water resources, both fresh and tidal, the soil, land in general, the dependence on land and water, such as plants, animals, and fish, including accumulative and absolute impacts, and the ability of natural systems to repair and rejuvenate, recover, and renew. S, social considerations, can include impacts on people, communities, indigenous populations, urban and rural settings, the disadvantaged and the developing. Governance can include how decisions are taken and whose views are even considered. Labor, indigenous people, communities, political systems, regulators, and capital. E, S, and G are interrelated and sometimes even at odds with each other. For example, a warming planet both extends the northern growing season, which helps farming communities, while raising sea levels, harming island economies. Solutions, such as adopting green energy, might push up the cost of energy for those least able to afford it. COP26 discussions included many of these factors, although the bulk of the media reports in my feed, admittedly they're skewed, tend to focus on big E, emissions. ESG has a new enforcer. Strangely, Western capital markets now find themselves the reluctant ESG enforcer. Markets can exert real pressure on companies throughout industry to declare their goals and intentions regarding ESG. And without that clarity, construction projects can't get insurance and production can't get funding. And financiers are now on the hook to find carbon offsets of quality and at scale to meet their own obligations and satisfy market demand for carbon management. In response, Businesses in the industry now have to make serious and binding commitments related to ESG to improve their performance, access capital, polish their brands, and lower their exposure to looming risks. Oh, and measure their progress, too. I believe that there is a digital sweet spot, an optimal use of new technology from digital transformation, that simultaneously helps the industry improve its ESG capacity and renders it more attractive to capital. To find the digital sweet spot, you need to look for those dimensions of the oil and gas industry that have not substantively changed in 10 plus years, feature large numbers of similar participants, and are not yet enabled by cloud computing. Fortunately, this is not a tall order. A quick way to see if a business area may have a digital sweet spot starts with running a little thought experiment. Imagine you need to call on a long-retired engineer, commercial professional, or operator, like a field worker, to help support your business because you're struggling to find staff in the pandemic. This is no joke. Welcome to 2021 in the U.S. nuclear sector, where the shortage of talent in the industry is fast becoming a crisis, and the retired are being coaxed off the golf course and sent back to the control room. Unfortunately, oil and gas also has many stable, older facilities that have long resisted change. They too have changed little so that someone retired from active work could actually return productively to the job site. As for a large number of similar market participants, most of us quickly think of assets such as wells, batteries, pumps, compressors, trucks, and gensets. But depending on the process, a participant could be a contract, an agreement, a purchase, a sale, or a delivery. Put these two criteria together, numerous participants, stable processes, and many more possibilities come into range. 
Oil and Gas is now using some digital tools with enthusiasm. Thanks to the celebrity virus called COVID, Oil and Gas swiftly abandoned their downtown office towers and moved home. Paper processes were reconfigured in response. Digital projects were accelerated. But there's still plenty of opportunity in the industry. Digital and ESG. With oil and gas facing capital constraints, but with high commodity prices pressuring the CFO to sanction production growth, funding a transformation of the business to align fully with all possible ESG dimensions is simply impractical. ESG will be about making hard choices and trade-offs. But beyond the bare minimum of compliance with existing regulations, here are four candidate areas for digital investments to improve ESG performance. Number one, brownfield assets. The majority of oil and gas infrastructure, from wells to gas stations, predate ESG concerns and the digital era. These assets now serve as a drag on the ability of companies to achieve much progress on their ESG commitments because they are so resistant to change. On the other hand, they can be data-rich assets because of their connections to SCADA and other monitoring systems. Where digital can help is by boosting analytic possibilities through machine learning and artificial intelligence. These tools can help improve the quality of legacy data so that it yields better analytic outcomes, as well as by conducting better analytics. Better analytics leads to better operations decisions that include ESG targets. In time, brownfield assets can be managed more tightly and in conformance with ESG goals. Second is carbon data. Brownfield assets will continue to be carbon sources for the foreseeable future, which means the industry will need to track carefully its carbon position so that it can make appropriate positive offsets. Today, carbon measurements tend to be from engineering principles, whereby a given asset designed to run at a certain level with a fuel of known characteristics has an estimated carbon output. However, assets leak and valves decalibrate. Because of scale effects, minor variances in carbon measurement accuracy can add up to huge absolute differences from engineering estimates. Digital tools can help by providing better monitoring of actual asset carbon impacts, by detecting vapors, and recording measurement data with low latency in easy-to-access cloud databases. Cameras are now very good at directly measuring vapor emissions, and new satellite technologies are bringing satellite imagery boosted by artificial intelligence to improve carbon measurement. Third is supply chain transparency. The supply chain for oil and gas is long and complex. Tracing products throughout the supply chain to provide assurance that the products were sourced from ethical suppliers with meaningful ESG practices is fast becoming a requirement by global brands. This is already very pronounced in consumer goods, pharmaceuticals, and many food products, and has now come to chemicals. Digital innovations provide better tracking and tracing of fluids, gases, and commodities throughout the supply chain. Given the chain's high level of fragmentation, multiple handoffs, discrete services, frequent changes in control, and high regulatory burden. Tools like blockchain are now very handy in helping to deliver the transparency that supply chain participants need to assert their ESG metrics. And finally, consider capital asset delivery. In a typical year, oil and gas invests half a trillion dollars in new capital to supply growth and to replace depleted resources. A portion will be spent in prospecting for new resources, securing underground assets, and maintaining production on existing assets. But a portion will also be invested in building new infrastructure, such as gas plants, refineries, LNG facilities, ports, tankers, and pipelines, to bring new greenfield oil and gas facilities to market and creating a dependency on the construction sector. But relative to other sectors, the construction sector itself is dramatically underserved by new technology. By 2018, the venture capital sector had injected only $1.5 billion in venture funding for technology-enabled transformation of the construction sector, which is valued at over $12 trillion. Innovators are applying digital tools to transform the sector. For example, a company specializing in augmented reality applications for design reviews in oil and gas estimates that 30% of the capital spent on physical assets actually requires field rework. 
typically because of errors that pass all the way through from engineering design to the field, even though the vast majority of these errors are actually detectable early. Field remediation is costly because of the incremental costs of mobilizing workers, tools, and equipment to the site. Schedules are impacted. Asset quality suffers. Such rework drives unnecessary carbon emissions, and there are some suppliers who actually feast on this systemic inefficiency. To improve and accelerate capital projects, asset owners are rapidly embracing modular design and build techniques, and with it, the opportunity to globalize the construction sector. Building modules in manufacturing facilities brings the efficiencies from assembly line thinking into construction. Faster builds pull asset values forward in time, reducing capital risk, minimizing emissions, and improving returns. Distributed fabrication globally also shares risks and helps nurture competitive supply chains. But to do so requires advanced digital twin technology enabled by cloud computing that spans these geographies. So in conclusion, we're only getting started. ESG considerations help us make better long-run choices about our enterprises, and digital tools can help energy companies exceed their ESG commitments.